Hello, I'm Michael Finley, attorney, certified natural health professional, and the author of The Tesla Conspiracy. Here to talk to you again about how to use everyday items as weapons. We're going to start with an item that you may not think of as an everyday item, but it was to the ancient Chinese. Now, at, at the time that a lot of martial arts were de uh, weapons were developed, there wasn't a lot of weapons that were available to the common people. And the Imperial troops were well armed, so if they had to fight Imperial troops, they would have to fight with whatever they got a hold of. So a lot of the things we think of today as sophisticated martial arts weapons were actually farm tools or cooking tools that the people got a hold of and used as weapons. So let's start with these. You'll know these as Sai, but to the ancient Chinese, ta-da, barbecue spits. So they would take one of these, they would put a chicken or other meat on here, there'd be a fork on each end here over the fire, and they would turn the end here to rotate the meat while they cooked it over the fire. Well, when it came time to have to fight against Imperial troops and not owning swords and things, they're looking for things to fight with, and somebody pulled these out and said, well, can I fight with these? So they practiced a bit and learned how to fight with them. Now there's many things you can do with Sai. Um, you can block with them so that if a sword hits you, contacts this instead of cutting into your arm um, or any other weapon if someone's using a staff or some other thing to strike you with. You can punch with them on this end. Hitting with that is pretty solid. Probably better than brass knuckles. Hit somebody in the face with that or the stomach or something or the sternum. You can hit with this end too and even though it's kind of blunt you can take out an eye with that. You could poke with it, but it's actually used more for striking sideways. Pow! Like this. Okay? Um, so, just do a quick little demonstration with the Psy. You could block here, stab here, block here, stab there. You can rotate them both up. You can rotate them both out. You can smack. A little weak on that one. There we go. You can spin them all the way around. Whatever you need to do with them. And the key for these is understanding what is the balance point. Now in this particular one, the balance point is right here between the thumb and the index finger. That's the balance point, this little web of flesh in between there, that's where it balances. You see the whole sigh is resting on that. And the, the motion is all made from spinning on that balance point. To spin out, I'm using my index finger to start the spin right into my other fingers. And to spin it back out, I'm spinning it onto my thumb and letting it slide around. Even to do a 360, I'm using entirely that web of skin. Caught on my shirt there for a second. I understand that these are actually used still by some uh, police in Asia as a weapon to strike or to block. Okay? So those are very handy. Sai. Again, they used a common everyday item and figured out how to use it as a weapon. Very formidable weapon nowadays in martial arts. <clears throat> Let's talk about something that you're more likely to have handy than a set of Psy. How about a stainless steel water bottle? Now this particular one, stainless steel, I've got it about three quarters full of liquid and it has a loop on the top. Once I screw this in uh, to the top of the bottle, it stays pretty solid. Okay, and I can put my finger in that loop and that becomes my balance point. Whatever I do, I can balance it there. Whether I, whether I pinch my thumb across my finger and use it to strike, whether I rotate it on that finger right into position to block a weapon, it's something that I can do very easily, manipulate it by using that as my balance point on my index finger. So let's talk about some things you can do with this. If someone has a knife, a bat, a pipe, or some other thing they're trying to hit you with, a stick, isn't it better to absorb that with this water bottle instead of having it hit your arm or your head or your body? So what you want to do is you want to get used to 
moving it with your index finger just right up like this. See how I'm, my, my index finger is just rotating right through there, grabbing onto the top. I'm going to try to aim to block it with this. I don't want to block it with my fingers, cut my fingers, or get my fingers smashed. I don't want to try to block with my elbow. I'm going to try to move it so that I'm, I'm putting the bottle in the way of the other person's weapon. Another thing that could, that could be done with this, especially if someone has a weapon, is to strike their hand that's holding the weapon. If I've got my hand on a weapon and you hit the back of my hand, there's all kinds of bones in the back of the hand. Lots and lots of bones. You hit it real hard, you're probably going to break one or more of those bones, cause them to drop the weapon. Even hitting the fingers on this side, if I hit those real hard, probably dropping that weapon. So if I've got a knife, guess what? This bottle is longer than the knife, most likely. And I can reach out and smack that person's hand, break their knuckles, break the back of the hand. Block. And you can use it to strike the person. Okay. Now from just right down here, holding it as you normally would, carrying a water bottle like this, you can come in a, in a very surprise attack right up into someone's jaw. Pop! Real quick. Pop! You're not expecting it because they don't see that bottle in your hand as a weapon. Also, hitting different places on the body, let's talk about vulnerable points. Uh, one of the number one vulnerable points has to be the head, especially the side of the head. Of course, if you can get in a position to hit the front of the face too, that's good. Hitting the side of the head here, especially where the temple is or across the ear, you're likely to knock somebody unconscious, possibly kill them. We've talked before in some of the other videos that there is a nerve running up the side of the neck here. You hit that, knock somebody unconscious or kill them. Also vulnerable points. Any place where you've had pain bumping it into something, okay, you've, you've bumped your knee into something, you've bumped your elbow into the something and it, and it hurt, like you bumped it into a doorway or into a desk or something accidentally, guess what? You hit that with this, it's going to hurt too. So hitting the elbow is a great place to hit. Hitting the knee, the side of the knee, uh, can do a lot of damage. Also, there's a bone. If, if you feel on your own forearm, starting up here by your wrist, and follow down, you can find a bone here. And you can follow that there's a lot of points along here where there's no muscle covering that bone. If you can hit that bone real good and hard, that's going to cause a lot of pain that the person's not going to be prepared to deal with and they're not going to expect. We've talked in prior videos when we talked about using a pen that when there's a bulge in a muscle, the bulge point is a good place to hit. So hitting the bicep can cause a lot of damage to the muscle and make it hard for that muscle to be used. Bicep, tricep, the different muscles in and out of the forearm, the thigh, thigh bicep, the calf, although it's hard to reach down lower leg, I would, I would use a, a short weapon like this, pretty much upper body down no lower than the knee, but I would definitely hit the knee with it and that's real easy to strike the knee. Um, ribs is always a great spot. If they've got their arm up because they're ready to hit you with something or stab you with something and you can swing this into their ribs, good chance you can break a rib. And this is, uh, when you have liquid in here, it's heavy. It's a lot heavier than when it's empty. And that weight causes it to have momentum and cause more damage. I'd recommend that you keep it at least half full if you're going to be carrying it for self-defense purposes. Although, I'll be frank with you, if I got caught in an emergency situation where somebody's attacking me and I got an empty water bottle, I'm still going to use the water bottle as effectively as I can. But with that water in it, this is like swinging a baseball bat. This will really do some damage. It's really powerful. So again, I'd block it, block things, I'd strike, and my, my, my first strike I'd want to do with this is one that they're not expecting. Just pow, right from there. No wind up to see it coming, just swing right up from the side. Use the momentum of the water, just boom. You're going to clock somebody real good with that. And practice with it. Practice swiveling it on that finger. It almost looks like I'm twirling the top of the bottle, but the bottle itself is spinning because my finger's spinning, so it's following my finger. And I'm letting it rotate onto the underside of my finger as I do that. My finger's curled onto the other underside. As I do it, roll, rotate it this way, it's on top of my finger. I'm just using that finger as the balance point for movement, just like we found a balance point for the psi on the thumb here. So, be prepared to use everyday items, whatever you've got on you, 
to defend yourself. Don't be a victim. Don't let the bad guys get away with harming you. Thank you very much. Be safe. Have a good day.